Hello everyone, this is Fossil Project. I am Mackenzie. And I'm Sam. And this is an episode of Paleo Provisions. And today what we're going to do is we're going to be doing an activity where we learn about the anatomy of trilobites through cooking. So this is a good activity for K-12 or just yourself uh, to learn about the anatomy of trilobites and just a little bit about trilobites themselves. So a couple of safety concerns to get out of the way. If you are going to do this as a, as a group activity, uh, please be conscious of the ingredients of the cookies and other uh, candies that you are using in, in your activity. Uh, a lot of them contain allergens and so we want to make sure everyone is safe. Also, uh, in this film, we're going to, in this video, we're going to be using actual knives, but if that is a concern of you, you can also use popsicle sticks to help spread the frosting. Make sure you follow local health and safety rules and make sure to wash your hands. Now that that's out of the way, let's, let's talk about what we're going to need for this activity. So for this video, we're going to need several ingredients. And what we're going to be using in this video doesn't mean that you have to stick with what we use. You can go and use sort of whatever you want. But we are going to need some oblong shaped cookies. And we're also going to be needing licorice and frosting. So those are our three base ingredients. We are going to be using spice drops for eyes. And that's about it. So now we're going to be assembling our trial bite cookie. And then I'll be going for a peanut butter one. And now we have our trilobite body right here. And trilobite means three lobes. And so that's gonna be our first step is creating those three lobes for our trilobite. So we're gonna grab some frosting. And I think earlier you said you wanted chocolate as well. Yes. So let's, Thank you. and then I'll be using vanilla if I can. And then we're just gonna we're just gonna take a little bit of frosting. Now, if, if you're doing this uh, as an activity with multiple people, you can pre-dish up some icing or frosting in those little like ketchup cups, and that's usually enough to spread across one cookie. So that's what we're gonna do. Is we're gonna spread the frosting. I've spread the frosting on mine. So I'm gonna take some licorice vines, or some licorice rope, I guess. So our next step is gonna be using our licorice to break the trilobite up into different loaves. So I'm gonna stick two pieces of licorice to make those three loaves. These loaves run up and down along the trilobite. So here we have our three lobe trilobite. In the middle, this is the axial lobe, and on the sides, those are called the pleural lobes. Awesome. So now, now what we're gonna do is we're going to make the other three parts of a trilobite. And so kind of like insects, uh, insects have a head, middle, and a rear. And trilobites also have a head, middle, and a rear, uh, but we have special terminology for those. And so the head of a trilobite is called the cephalon, the middle, like insects, is called a thorax, and the rear is called the pygidium. And so we're also going to use licorice to uh, make those distinctions on our trilobite. So mine's going to have a really tiny pygidium. The head's going to be a little bit bigger, and that's not staying. I think I made my lobes a little too long. So now we have a, a cephalon region, a thorax region, and a pygidial region on our trilobite. And on mine, the pygidial region kind of has these spines that stick out, and some trilobites do have spines, and those who are likely for defense against, against predators. Now trilobites occupied a variety of what we call niche spaces, meaning that they lived not only in different habitats, but they had different lifestyles. So some lived in different parts of the ocean, some very close to the coast, and others in deeper water. Some were swimming world, others, most of them 
though spent most of their time on the sea floor. And they also ate different things. So some were more predatory, while some were more scavengers, and others were more herbivorous. So we have a wide variety of, of trilobite living styles. All right, so up next, what we're gonna do is we are going to put eyes on our trilobites. Trilobites were one of the first organisms to evolve complex eyes. What's interesting about trilobite eyes is they actually are covered in tiny calcite lenses, much like compound eyes in insects, which again, are their relatives. However, there are some trilobites that don't have their famous eyes, and these blind trilobites often lived in dark, muddy water. These guys are most known, or best known, as the trilobite order Agostida. So, some, some trilobites had small eyes, some had large eyes, some had eyes that could see almost 360 degrees and that stood, stood up really tall and had these sort of visor-like projections on them. And that trilobite is called Ibano Chile and found today in Morocco. We can add more details to our trilobites. Uh, we can add, for example, more licorice uh, to have more of the ribbing along the thorax, which once again is the, the middle of the trilobite. Um, if we want. Sam, do you need more, more licorice? I do not. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, trilobites, because they are arthropods, they also have jointed legs. Uh, we don't necessarily need to add every part of the trilobite on to our trilobite cookies. What's important is that, you know, that they show us something that looks like a trilobite and that it's kind of fun to make. And you too can experiment with your own trilobites and make your own trilobites and, you know, add different features. And especially if you're doing this as an activity uh, with students, you might have encourage some creativity and then ask your students if they, they put some something funky on their trilobite like you know what might have this adaptation been used for how would this have helped this particular trilobite species so that's one way that you can combine the creativity and with um, a more deep thinking question and there are about 10 orders of trilobites in total. So that's a lot of, of diversity within morphology. Trilobites are actually a very successful group, originating in the Cambrian at about 521 million years ago and going extinct in the Permian-Triassic extinction about 252 million years ago. However, trilobites were on the decline around the Devonian, which is around in the middle of their reign. However, it took the Permian-Triassic extinction to fully wipe them off the earth. So trilobites have an exoskeleton, and they also have soft internal parts. And exoskeleton really helped trilobites survive uh, a lot of predatorial attacks, but that doesn't mean that they couldn't have been eaten by other animals. Now trilobites also have a defense mechanism, which we can't really show here because our cookies aren't flexible but they could roll up in a ball, kind of like today's pill bugs, and that would, or armadillos, and that acted as a defensive behavior in order to make it harder for predators to, to bite down them, eat them, and also get into a, a softer, softer tissues. Trilobite morphology was absolutely crazy throughout the Paleozoic era. And so now I think, to eat our trilobites or our trilobites. Right. Ah. trilobites. Trilobites are very useful for a couple other reasons in paleontology. One is that we can use them to help date the rocks. They're really good. Some are very good index fossils. Another way that trilobites are useful in paleontology is that they can be very useful for paleogeography or trying to infer uh, what the geography of the world was like uh, way back when. So we know that there are trilobites that are very similar in Morocco and Oklahoma. So we infer that during the Devonian period, about 375 million years ago, that these places were probably closer to each other based on the fact that their trilobites are very similar in shape. If you would like to learn more about trilobites, be sure to visit www.trilobite.info. Uh, 
there's also a book that the, the creators of the website also have. This is a pictorial guide to the orders of trial bikes by Samuel M. Gone the third. Uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, tell, talks about trial bite morphology, why trial bites are useful, and just trial bites in general. So that's it for today's episode. If you like this video, please also in turn, please leave us a like as well. If you have any comments about trial bites or suggestions for future episodes on activities, leave those in the comment section below. And if you would like to stay informed about our videos, uh, please hit that subscribe button and also ring the bell for a notification whenever we come out with a new video. Be sure to follow us on our social media accounts for more fossil fun. We have a Twitter, a Facebook, and an Instagram, so don't forget to check those out. And also be sure to check us out on the My Fossil website at www.myfossil.org. Well guys, that's all the time we have for today. We'll see you on our next episode. Bye! Alright, no, stick. Stick. Okay. Yeah. Here are three tips to keep your trilobites safe. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, one more time. Okay. Oh, I just ate the cookie. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing for you. Alright. This is like Jurassic Park. The raptors are like turning the door handles. Alright. Clap a girl. <laughs> that was so perfect. Alright, really alright.